Hey everybody, it's Jeff from New York, your guide to everything New York City. And this video is for all you smart people out there, or people who like to look smart by walking around the city with a book in their hands. Today we are visiting the New York Public Library. The famous main branch building is actually located inside Bryant Park on a two-block section of 5th Avenue between 40th and 42nd Streets. This is the main branch that everyone's familiar with, the ones with the lion's patience and fortitude out front. The library system is actually made up of lots of branches located in Manhattan, the Bronx, and Staten Island. The city's other two boroughs, Brooklyn and Queens, are serviced by their own library systems. The New York Public Library is the second largest in the U.S. behind the Library of Congress and the fourth largest in the world with over 53 million items available. The cornerstone of this famous building was laid in 1902 and the library was opened in 1911, taking a lot longer than expected. On opening day, the library had over 75 miles of shelving and over 1 million volumes. The building became a National Historic Landmark in 1965. It looks like rain today. Let's stop in and check it out, so to speak. <laughs> Before we step inside, just a little bit about the exterior of the building. The organizers of the New York Public Library wanted an imposing main branch, and they chose a central site along 5th Avenue between 40th and 42nd Streets, on top of the old Croton Reservoir. The building contains a huge reading room on top of seven floors of book stacks, combined with a system that's designed to get books into the hands of library users as fast as possible. When the building opened in 1911, it was the largest marble structure up to that time in the United States. The famous lions guarding the entrance to the library were first dubbed Leo Astor and Leo Lennox after John Jacob Astor and James Lennox who founded the library. Shortly after opening, however, it was determined that one of the lions was actually female, so they became Lady Astor and her brother Lord Lennox. During the Great Depression, Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia changed their names once and for all to Patience and Fortitude. Patience lounges on the south side of the steps and Fortitude to the north. Okay, let's head inside. If you're entering through the main front entrance on 5th Avenue, you're going to come in and enter into Astor Hall, which is the main entrance to the library. Without a doubt, the phrase, they don't build them like they used to, was first uttered right here. The building has lots of stairs. Unless you're physically challenged, I suggest you climb up and down all of them. Each staircase is unique and beautiful in its own right. As you descend or ascend, stop halfway, hold on to the railing, and look up. The ceilings, chandeliers, and artwork surrounding the staircases are magnificent. If you can't do the stairs, the building is completely accessible to everyone via ramps and elevators. Ugh, more stairs, but I really like this shot. It's rather artistic if I may say so myself. Not bad for an amateur in his cell phone. The library has lots of beautiful hallways. It's fun to get lost and just peek into each doorway and see where it goes. Hey, let's play a game. Can you spot the difference between these two photos? Photo 1, Photo 2, Photo 1, Photo 2. It's really a no-brainer. Just comment below. Most libraries have drop ceilings with cardboard tiles, fluorescent lights, steel doors and door frames, industrial carpet, and metal shelving. The New York Public Library is unlike any other. Just one of what seems like hundreds of doors to pass through and explore. This one leads to yet another reading room. There's free Wi-Fi everywhere in the building. Now, shh, quiet. The library has a few of these old school phone booths. The old phrase drop a dime is not heard much anymore. You have to drop at least 10 dimes for 4 minutes. These booths are not used much anymore, but it would really be a shame if the library had them removed. They say New York City has the best drinking water in the world, and I would tend to agree with that. Apparently it also has some of the best drinking fountains as well. The library has lots in the hallway. They're all beautiful, and each one is different from the other. What looked like an interesting doorway didn't disappoint as usual. This is the U.S. and local history room. I fell in love with the iron, brass, marble, and wood staircase that leads to the mezzanine. Check out the old index cabinets and pencil sharpeners under the staircase. Also note the caged-in volumes on the lower floor. These are old, fragile, and priceless books which you have to ask for assistance to look at. You will need to leave your shoes with the librarian if you want to handle these particular books. 
The library encourages readers not to put books they pulled back on the shelves. Instead, readers are encouraged to leave the books at the far end of the tables where they will be gathered by staff members and placed in their correct locations. By the way, if you believe that shoe deposit thing, I have a bridge about a half a mile east that I'm willing to sell cheap. And here we have the library gift shop. Books, blank journals, calendars, bookmarks, posters, postcards, and stuffed lions. You cannot go home without a stuffed lion. Remember, patience and fortitude are outside guarding the building. For those of you with plans to visit exciting New York City, I suggest the Photos New York City Guide. It's written by locals and has a lot of insider tips. Lots of pull-out maps and descriptions that will help you plan your next visit with ease. You can check it out by clicking on the link in this video's description. It's the best guide out there to the city. I wouldn't leave home without it. Neither should you. Near the center of the library, you'll come across the Magua Rotunda. A little less marble, a little more intricately carved wood, and a whole lot of beautiful art on the walls. The beautiful art on the walls and ceiling of the Magua Rotunda depict the history of the written word. Some of these works are over 15 feet high and very rich in colors. The murals are the labor of artist Edward Lanning. If your pockets are deep enough, and I mean really deep pockets, you can book the rotunda for receptions, dinners, and cocktail events. Right off the McGraw Rotunda is the Edna Barnes Solomon Room. This reading room is currently filled with the works of American artists. The reading room has a plaster ceiling with ornate detail and it's in great shape. It looks beautiful. I believe it was recently restored like everything else at the library. However, hung from the ceiling is Home Depot-ish track lighting, which I just didn't understand. It doesn't seem to fit. Call me crazy. Here we have just a few examples of some of the art in the Edna Barnes Solomon reading room. Cool and warm, bright and dark, textured and smooth, the library is a feast for the eyes while the ears go hungry. Remember, shh. You may find certain areas of the library a little dark and a little chilly. It's just to help preserve the books, and I thought they were trying to save money. The library wants to know, what are you reading now? As mentioned earlier, I'm always thumbing through the Freuders New York City Guide. It's more of a guide than a book, but I just can't put it down. So tell us by leaving a comment below, what are you reading now? And here we have the kids' room at the New York Public Library. Lots of activities here for the young ones. It's a little noisier and a lot more kid-friendly than most of the library. And you can feel safe leaving your kids here knowing that the staff is trained and your kids are being watched by the library lion's patience and fortitude. The library has a photo exhibit from the photographer William Myers called Outer Burrows. Myers has a keen eye for all things New York City, especially the Outer Burrows. I really enjoy his work. Unfortunately, I can't show you any of his photographs in this video for legal reasons. However, if you want to learn more about Myers and his book, Outer Burrows, just click on the link below in the description. We've come across the Jill Cupkin Rose Gallery. This exhibit consists of large wall panels with photographs, text, objects, and videos illustrating the history and the vast array of collections and services offered by the library and its branches. If you rush through the library, you're going to miss all the beautiful hidden details. While I was at the library, there was an exhibition called Public Eye, 175 Years of Sharing Photography. This exhibition is drawn entirely from the library's photo collection, and it explores the various ways in which photography has been shared and made public since 1839. This edition was added to the library in the late 1980s to support the organization's growing catalog. One can clearly see where the classic marble building ends and the newer glass and steel structure begins. However, I think they did a great job transitioning. It seems seamless. The library had yet another free exhibition called Over Here, which focuses on World War I. This poster outside might look cool, but I really like the stand that it's in. Here's the entrance to the Over Here exhibit. It's pretty impressive. The Over Here exhibit has lots of original posters from the World War I era. While these are highly collectible, it's not unusual for someone to find them amongst their personal belongings. The exhibit features original sheet music as well as a 1908 phonograph with wax cylinder recordings. I wonder, where would one begin to try to explain music streaming to someone in 1908? Here we have a World War I poster, leaflet, and a book dealing with patriotic toasts. 
Recessed deep into the library walls are numerous busts of those who have contributed to the library in one way or another. You'll find them all around the library. There are dozens of reading rooms in the library, but there's very few windows. I did manage to peek out of one of the windows and noticed that it had stopped raining. So as soon as this video is over, click on another video of mine and let's visit another attraction of New York City. This brass plaque and ornate door can be seen when one exits the library. It's been a great educational, entertaining, and free afternoon at one of New York City's must-visit locations. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe by clicking on the button on the left. On the right, you can click on my playlist of narrated photo videos, or my playlist of walking 4K videos. Thanks again and I'll see you around the city.